Creative Commons licenses give creators a way to both retain rights over their creative works and allow others to use or share legally. To understand how modern Creative Commons licenses work, this video reviews key elements of copyright law that protect intellectual property and some exemptions to copyright. In this video, we will cover the purpose of copyright, what you can and can't copyright, and exemptions on copyright. Please remember this video is providing information on key concepts and is not intended to be legal advice. The purpose of copyright. Copyright is a legal protection for an owner of intellectual property that gives them exclusive rights over the work. The term intellectual property refers to the ownership of intangible creations of human intellect. Copyright is one form of legal protection for people's original or creative ideas. Other intellectual property protections include patents, for instance for inventions, and trademarks, for instance for brand logos. Since the 18th century, governments have expanded the legal rights of copyright holders over their intellectual property. There are two legal rationales underpinning copyright law. One is to motivate people to create new works by guaranteeing their ownership of their rights to it. This is called the utilitarian approach. Another is to legally acknowledge the connection between creators and their works. This author's rights legal rationale is concerned with ensuring creators receive attribution and preserve the integrity of their works. What Copyright Grants Copyright provides legal protection for creative works, so those without copyright cannot copy, distribute, perform, adapt, or otherwise use it without explicit permission. It gives exclusive rights to control certain uses of the work by others, with some limited exceptions. Whoever holds the copyright has the power to grant permission for others to reuse their work. These rights belong to the holder of the copyright, and that might not necessarily be the author of the work. It could, for instance, belong to their employer and not to them as the author or creator. Copyright gives its owner the exclusive rights to control certain uses of the work, including, but not limited to, making copies of the work, performing or communicating the work through public performance or broadcasts, or to transform via adaptation, translation, or new arrangement of the work, sometimes this adaptation is called derivation. It's worth noting that any new elements in an adaptation are entitled to their own copyright too. Generally, the copyright owner retains copyright over the original content, the person adapting it may claim copyright over the new elements they added. If you're the creator of an original work and it wasn't done as part of a job for a client, you automatically are seen as the copyright holder of your original work once it has been made tangible. Generally, you do not have to register your work anywhere to have copyright protections. To further solidify someone's copyright, some countries have local copyright authorities with whom you can file your copyright paperwork. This may provide the copyright holder with certain additional legal advantages or be required if they thought they might have to one day enforce their rights in court. Another thing to note that copyright grants these protections for years, for decades after the creator's death. So as a creator, you don't have to worry about the copyright on your work expiring during your lifetime. Copyright gives creators protection for the expression of their ideas, whatever form that may take. However, copyright does not apply to the idea itself. You could, for instance, copyright your painting of the equation 2 plus 2 equals 4, but you can't copyright the idea that 2 plus 2 equals 4. There are other related concepts in copyright laws that you should know about. The first is the concept of moral rights. Many countries also recognize moral rights that protect the link between a work and its creator. Moral rights are distinct from the economic rights provided by copyright. If a creator sells their copyrights to a third party, they still maintain their moral rights to the work. While not all countries have moral rights, in others, moral rights are viewed as so integral to a work that they can last indefinitely and they cannot be licensed or waived away by the creator. Two examples of these moral rights are the right to be recognized, this is the duty of attribution to the originator of the work, regardless of whom the copyright holder is. And a second is the right to protect the work's integrity. This allows the author to object to distortions or mutilations of the work that prejudice the author's honor or reputation. There are also similar and related rights. 
These rights grant additional exclusive rights beyond what we've already reviewed. They're intended to give some legal copyright-like protections to those who perform in or broadcast a work to the public. For those who want to use Creative Commons licenses, you should know Creative Commons licenses and legal tools account for moral rights and similar and related rights. It means those who use Creative Commons licenses and tools give permission to the public to use their works that might otherwise violate those terms. A final comment on this point. Each country has its own copyright laws, and despite there being global copyright treaties and agreements, there is no single international copyright law to guide you. If you are unsure about a specific nation's laws, it's better to look them up online than hope you got it right. The public domain. Some creative works are considered in the public domain. This material is freely available for anyone to reproduce, adapt, or transform. However, Moral rights still exist on the work, meaning if you take a work of Shakespeare and translate it into another language, you still have to credit Shakespeare as the author of the work. A work becomes part of the public domain in one of four ways. One, it was never entitled to copyright protection. This might include things such as official texts from a legislative body or administrative rules of a state. Two, the copyright expires. While this varies from country to country, the rights afforded by copyright end somewhere between 50 to 100 years after the death of the creator, at which time the material becomes part of the public domain. 3. The copyright holder dedicates their work to the public domain before the copyright protection expires. And finally, the copyright holder failed to comply with requirements needed to obtain or maintain their copyright. Given that in most countries today no formal process is needed to claim copyright over your work, this is no longer needed, but in the past that requirement may have resulted in works being considered part of the public domain. To find public domain materials, check out Project Gutenberg, Public Domain Review, and Wikimedia Commons. A final note on using materials in the public domain. What might be in the public domain in one country might not be in another. Keep this in mind and don't use the materials where copyright still applies. In the last section, I want to talk to you about exceptions to copyright. There are some uses of copyrighted works that are allowed under the law for which no copyright license is required. This is often called fair use or fair dealing. Certain uses have been recognized by countries as being important to have access to the materials without always getting a pre-approval for the copyright use. This includes criticism, commentary, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, research, parody, and also to make it accessible for the visually impaired. If you use copyrighted material in one of these ways, you are able to claim a legal defense of fair use. It's important to note that there's no legal entitlement of fair use to use someone's copyrighted work. Instead, fair use and fair dealing provide you with a legal defense in case you are sued for copyright infringement. The two main ways countries have dealt with limitations or exceptions to copyright is either first by listing specific activities that are exempted from copyright protections. For instance, Japan has a exemption from copyright law that allows classrooms to broadcast copyrighted materials. The other approach is to use a flexible guidelines and then let the courts determine exactly which uses are considered or not considered fair use. In the United States, fair use is determined by using a four-factor test, in which federal court judges will consider 1. the purpose and character of the use, 2. the nature of the copyrighted work, 3. the amount and how much substantially of the work was used, and four, the effect of the use upon potential marketability for the copyrighted work. If you're planning on publishing something, take the time to educate yourself about the exceptions and limitations that apply in your country or the country where you will be publishing so you can take full advantage of your rights. In this video, you've learned the purpose of copyright, what you can and cannot copyright, and some important exceptions to copyright law. For more information on Creative Commons licenses and how to use them, please visit the website creativecommons.org.